Hi everyone, Dr. Nimichek here. I just want to emphasize today that recovery from a neurological injury is all about inflammation. Okay? And these injuries, so let's talk about non-bleeding injuries. So a minor traumatic brain injury or what we would call a concussion or even things less than the concussion. We call them sub-concussive events. And then we also have cellular damage from emotional trauma and inflammatory uh, stress. So think of surgeries, big bone fractures, COVID, all right? That if your body's functioning normally, you should recover from all this stuff within you know, a couple weeks or a couple months. And if you don't, it's because you have too much systemic inflammation through your bloodstream. These chemicals we call cytokines are circulating, they get in the brain, and the repair mechanism doesn't work. All right? So, and, and I don't care if we're talking about autism, all the way through the whole spectrum of all these chronic neurological problems that a, even adults have, all the way up to Alzheimer's, the underpinning and the whole thing is inflammation. Okay? If people say, well, they're talking about like all sorts of plaques and all this kind of stuff. The research is loaded with stuff about inflammation. And even in Alzheimer's, for instance, most of the drugs that they found that have some benefit over the last decade or two in Alzheimer's, albeit not a whole lot, but when they do, it's because they lower inflammation. Okay? They're even trying to repurpose these cholesterol drugs like Lipitor and Crestor for the brain. Now, they don't talk about cholesterol, but because those drugs lower inflammation. By the way, that's the only reason why they help with heart disease. It has nothing to do with the cholesterol, really. But anyhow, I digress. It's all about inflammation. You got to lower it, okay? In medicine, generally, the best thing to do is get rid of the thing that causes the problem in the first place versus trying to artificially lower it, all right? Now, where can your inflammation come from? Food. Big deal in food. The biggies are excessive omega-6 fatty acids that are found in these vegetable oils, as well as that when you feed grain like corn and soybeans to livestock, you get a version of a different omega-6 fatty acid called arachidonic acid in their meat and these acids. When you ingest them, they turn into the molecules that naturally turn on inflammation. So you gotta get rid of grain-fed livestock, you gotta <clears throat> get rid of these oils. Fortunately, olive oil will protect you from most of that stuff. The other thing in the food are called advanced glycation end products or AGEs. This occurs when you cook your food too much and these molecules increase, okay? Big deal. So like, as an example, diabetes, your blood sugars are driven by inflammation. Okay, you take diabetics and you change the way they eat. You don't change how much they eat. You don't change the food they eat. You just cook it at a lower temperature and they make less of these AGEs and their blood sugars come way down. Okay, from ingesting too little of AGEs. These are all processed foods. This is the deep fryer at the restaurant. Okay, where they keep reheating that oil to create these AGEs. And then, I hate to say it everybody, artificial sweeteners. Uh, now, uh, Splenda, for instance, aspartame has been shown to do this too. Um, these things damage your gut bacteria, they're causing leaky gut, and they cause inflammation. These things are poisonous, and they're putting them in everything. Is everything, oh, I got this little drink, it tastes kind of sweet, there's no calories, you know? It's causing inflammation. The, infl the calories ain't going to kill you, the inflammation's going to kill you, okay? So, inflammation's coming from the food. Inflammation is coming from your gut bacteria, where you have bacterial overgrowth. Now, a third of people don't even have any symptoms for this. Now, there are some breath tests you can use to help with that, but they're notoriously inaccurate. They're wrong like 20, 30% of the time. I don't even bother with them. And people say, well, how do you know if they don't have symptoms? Sometimes I just treat them. We use that medicine, Rifaximin. It's super safe because it doesn't get in your bloodstream. Hell, it's safer than buying Robitussin at the pharmacy. Most people don't realize Robitussin can cause psychosis. Yeah, especially if you got a fever. All right? So, and uh, so I'll just have to treat them. We don't have tests yet to tell us 
we don't have good tests yet to tell us do we have leaky gut, do we have bacterial overgrowth, and so as clinician I just got to treat them and uh, see how that works. And then another major thing is when you get these injuries or just a straight inflammation, your parasympathetics and your autonomic nervous system might not work correctly because of an injury or just the inflammation itself uh, can make your vagus nerve fail. The vagus nerve is your natural regulator of inflammation. If that fails, you've got a lot of excess inflammation. And they've shown now the, you know, the major autoimmune disorders, psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, and ankylosing spondylitis all uh, look to, it looks like you have to have the vagus nerve fail, so your breaking mechanism, the thing that controls inflammation, has to fail before, boom, you get those conditions. Now they're even producing more inflammation. Okay? You got some neurological stuff going on? Okay? And if you're wondering, go take to my website, take our little autonomic quiz. It'll tell you if you got something going on. And you want to fix it, you got to lower inflammation. Okay? I, I have respect for MDR, all these magnets, all this other kind of stuff that people are doing. But it's really, you got to address these huge sorts of stuff coming in the food supply, this mess. If you have bacterial overgrowth, that'll trigger upwards of 70% of your immune system cause inflammation. There, we don't have anything that can control that. Okay? That's massive. What do you do? You fix the bacterial overgrowth with refraction when the gut will heal itself. Okay? And then if you've had a lot of problems, especially after COVID, you got to put your ear out for this because it's looking like you don't just have leaky gut. It looks like COVID is punching these holes right in your small intestine. Now, I don't mean something big enough to put your finger through, but on a molecular level, leaky gut is just this like squeaking through. So these are two cells. Leaky gut is squeaking through the inside. What's happening in COVID is boom, two, three cells gone. A big rent and stuff flooding into your immune system. Okay, we're working on some things to try to fix that. This is a problem that's similar in HIV. And uh, and so stay tuned for that. We I don't have anything I can post yet on how to fix that, but I, I think we're well on our way. We'll have that figured out within the next three to six months. Um, just needing feedback, more feedback from patients. So anyhow, you got a neurological problem? Okay, you got an inflammatory problem, first and foremost. And you got to go after that. And when you do, your brain can fix it. Okay, damn near all of it, I promise. All right, everybody, good luck. Take care of yourselves. Keep going.